Nicholas Tall, I will present the Behaviour Change Technique Taxonomy, also referred to as BCTT B1. Interventions to change behaviour have had modest and variable effects, as any systematic review of behavioural interventions will show you. And if we're to improve interventions, we need to unpack the black box of interventions. What is it that's bringing about the effect? What is in the black box? And how do components have their effect? This is where theory comes in. And how can we use this intervention to design more effective interventions? In 2008, uh, some excellent reporting guidelines were published by Consult and asked for precise details of interventions. Who delivered, who received, where, how, how long, what was in the intervention? But we need to provide sufficient details to allow replication. And this is where behaviour change techniques come in. We know that when we look at uh, published descriptions, there's both underreporting and variable terms. Um, often they're vague and lacking in detail. Um, the terminology may be inconsistent. So we need good, clear descriptions using language that is understood by all. So the same term used for the same component. Without this, we're limited in our ability to replicate, implement those interventions that are effective, um, evaluate interventions, and improve interventions. Um, look at the contrast between biomedicine, say in relation to smoking cessation interventions. Varenicline, a pharmaceutical intervention, very precise intervention content, and the mechanism of action specified. When it comes to um, behavioural interventions, a copper review from 2005, again, very vague, non-replicable uh, description and no mechanism of action described. So behaviour change techniques, what are they? They're the active ingredients within the intervention that are designed to change behaviour. They're observable, replicable, discrete low-level components of intervention that on their own have the potential to change behaviour. They can be delivered on their own, but usually in combination with others. And these are organised into a taxonomy, very much like the elements, chemical elements, are organised into the periodic table, providing a common language and theoretically based organisation. Um, in 2013, we published uh, the 93-item behaviour change technique uh, taxonomy in Annals of Behavioural Medicine. And um, these 93 items are in 16 groupings. Um, so to give an example, if you look at the top left-hand corner, uh, you'll see the first of the 16 groupings, goals and planning. And this has nine different behaviour change techniques. You just see the labels there. But for every single technique, um, there is a definition, which also distinguishes it from what it's not, and also examples of it. And these groupings reflect different mechanisms. Um, so, for example, shaping knowledge, reward and threat, self-belief. These are all different ways in which interventions have their effect. So to summarize this, um, specifying interventions in terms of behavior change techniques provides an agreed standard method to describe interventions as accurately as possible. So they can be replicated to build evidence. And so effective interventions can be implemented. Um, they're helpful in evaluation, for example, in factorial designs, both to identify the active ingredients, the what, you know, which components are doing the heavy lifting, um, but also to investigate those mechanisms of action through the theoretical groupings. And then designing interventions, this, these specific techniques help to identify, to translate general intervention functions or types of intervention into specific behavior change techniques. Um, also to improve interventions. Um, and finally, very importantly, to be able to characterize interventions in this way so that one can synthesize across different published reports from systematic reviews. Thank you.